Hey, this is Jeff. Welcome to this edition of After Five, a music, art, and entertainment podcast picking up for my radio show, Left Off. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to this edition of After Five. Today we have, as our guest, to talk a little bit about his band and their new album, Hans, the guitarist of the German band Feuerschwanz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, very good. That's, that's, cool. that's cool. I heard all kinds of different pronunciations, all kinds of variations. Oh, <laughs> I could just imagine. So, so Hans, <laughs> the, the band was formed back in 2004. You kind of came into the fold in 2008. So tell us a little bit about the band history and how you became part of them yeah well um, the band basically started was started by our singer Peter the, the helped man mm-hmm. <laughs> and he um, he formed he left his uh, former band and he already was busy in the medieval scene somehow playing on LARP conventions and all the things mm-hmm. and he wanted to create a band which takes him themselves not so seriously and makes a little bit fun about all those fairies and everything and wanted to show the real medieval times which were which have been a bit a bit more dirty than most people imagine i think <laughs> and yeah and at the beginning it was a pure acoustic band and they were playing on medieval markets and and conventions and fairs and stuff like that without electric guitar without drums without real drums and without bass but, but um, <clears throat> at one point they wanted to record a live DVD, a, a live show, and they wanted to try and some songs with an added electric guitar. And that's why he asked me, because we've been in, at school together, so mm-hmm. we know each other for a really long time. So um, yeah, he, was, he did ask me if I wanted to join for, just for the show. And it was so much fun. And the audience is so celebrating and so full of energy that I said, "Yeah, I have to, I have to stay." <laughs> and yeah, the rest is history. I'm still, I'm still with them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you said, when they kind of started out, it was just kind of like a fun type of a thing. But you know, eventually, you guys started to take this a little bit more serious. I mean, not that you weren't ever serious with your music. So when was it that you kind of decided like, hey, we're like a band now, and you kind of took a more serious direction with your music, but you still always kind of kept some of that humor in there. So about when was it that you were like, really came to do this decision that it's time to get more serious here? Yeah, well, it, I think it was not not just one certain point where now we're going to do metal or whatever. It was like a gradual mm-hmm. like, conversion, you know. I always tried to infuse some some heavier riffs mm-hmm. with my guitar, and and it took some time until all, the rest of the band um, followed. But I think the real switch came when we switched um, to Napalm Records, when we changed our record label, and that's when we really started to take things more seriously, but still with a little wink in our eye, you know, <laughs> just um, there still has to be some fun in the music. And yeah, but I think the switch to Napalm Records was the really was if you if I would have to choose a point, that would be the point. <laughs> and, and since switching to switching to uh, to Napalm Records, um, what has that meant for the band? Well, it, it, before we've been at a very small independent label and and then we came to the big record label, which is all about metal music. And there we are with our violins and bagpipes and, and <laughs> flutes. So um, we thought it was a chance to uh, to broaden our audience, you know, mm-hmm. just to reach more people through festivals, through music, through magazines and everything, and through videos. And we still have our roots in the medieval scene, mm-hmm. medieval rock scene, which I think is might be a very unique thing in Germany. I mean, you have folk metal bands all over the world, but in, in Germany you, you also have folk metal bands, but you also have something which we call medieval rock bands. And they usually started out in, in at medieval markets, like which are all over Germany, and there are bands like In Extremo or Subway to Sally or Schandmaul. 
And they all started small at those medieval markets and grew to become bigger rock or metal bands. And that's, that's a very German thing, I think. Yeah, that's where we come from and that's where we still are. But we also um, have a more metal audience now, which is a good thing, I think. <laughs> well, you, you do kind of inject some of that medieval stuff into your uh, videos, which are... I love to watch them, actually. So do you like making these videos? Oh, they're so much fun. <laughs> but they're, at the same time, there's so much work. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because it... Well, it's so much preparation and to think about everything and get all the all the little details like swords or shields and everything to find the right location. I mean, we have a lot of castles here in, in Germany mm -hmm. everywhere, but still you need the permission that you're allowed to shoot there and then you, it's a lot of things to organize. But once you've done that and you're at the set shooting it, it's so much fun because, yeah. Because we are Feuerschwanz and we can do a lot, which other bands might maybe not dare to do. But since we have our roots and the more we, are, but we, are, yeah, we also are a fun band, you know. And they, so we do things and we try things out with our videos. And now, yeah. now the band also, you guys have quite a few full-length albums out. With your latest, I think, being your eleventh. And all of your albums are in German. Now, does the band have any plans on doing any future albums in English or an English version? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> actually. <laughs> now maybe, that you bring it up. <laughs> That's a coincidence. <laughs> uh, well, actually, um, at the moment, we are, we are on the title of the current Metal Hammer magazine, which is a German metal mag. And they have a CD included to the magazine, and there are two English songs on it. Ooh. We used some two old songs, das Elf, uh, Untod im Drachenboot and Kampfzwerg, which we translated to War Dwarf. And um, yeah, and that's our. These are our first original songs, which we translated to German, uh, to English, sorry, from German to English. And but there might be more coming. In the well, little baby steps. <laughs> Yeah, baby steps. But there might be more coming in the not so far future. But for now, we have a, a new album, Fegefeuer, coming out in July. That's, but that's still in, in German. Now, what was that like for you then, trying to translate it into English, but to still fit the music? <laughs> well, since I'm playing guitar, it's still the same chords for mm -hmm. me to play. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but, but it's, it's a challenge because... Um, not everything which is working in German does, does work in English. So you have to find different metaphors and stuff like that, you know, which sounds funny in German, doesn't sound funny in English if you translate <laughs> right. it word by word. So you have to be very thoughtful about it. And our singers had some help by some native speakers to, to get um, some corrections and, yeah, to... to to keep, but still to keep the original idea of, of the lyrics. And that's, I think, the hard part to do, you know, yeah. when you translate the lyrics. Not so, to lose the wit of, of the original, yeah. But it has to make sense in English as well, so that's not easy. <laughs> so good thing you're not the singer then. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing, yeah. So that's, that's easy for me in, this, in that case. <laughs> so, you know, even though your albums are in German, I think the music totally speaks for itself because there's so much going on with all the different instruments and musical compositions. So let's talk about Thank your you. current release, Figure for You. Okay. Figure for You. Yeah, it's like, Figa you know, Figa. translation. I'm learning you know German is? all along the way here. <laughs> That's good. Do, do you know what it means? Figa? Purgatory. Exactly. Because yeah. I looked it up. <laughs> Yeah, very good. <laughs> so, <you're prepared. laughs> so, so, what are some of these th songs about on the album, and what kind of musical elements? Because I know you guys use a lot of different instruments. Did you use on this one? Well, we, well, we have obviously we have um, our violin player Joanna, mm -hmm. and we have our singer who plays also bagpipe and flutes, mm -hmm. and that creates lots of the medieval sound in our music. And basically, what we always try to do. Or what we try to do more and more <clears throat> to have really bad metal songs 
<laughs> but we add on top of it the melodies with mm -hmm. um, with the violin and the flute and bagpipe, and I hope, and I think it creates a very unique sound combined with the German language, which might be unusual for one or the other listener. But to me, music has to create uh, a message or a picture in your mind without knowing the words, if you know what, what I mean. I think music has to work without words, right. even though if you hear someone singing, but you don't have to understand what he's singing to get the feeling or the, some, some emotion, you know? It's like when you, you probably used to, to understand all the lyrics because you're a native English speaker, but I'm not. So when I'm listening to, to songs in English, I don't focus on the lyrics. I just focus on the melody and, and on the expression of the singer, you know. And when I'm interested more in the lyrics, then I'm trying to read them up or something. But but lyrics from English songs don't come naturally to me while I'm listening to them. Do you understand what I mean? So Obviously, I, I do understand what you mean because that same thing happens when I'm listening to your music. I don't know what the yes. heck you're saying, but it's still enjoyable to listen to. And not only, yeah. you know, like you said, the emotion of the singer and, and you know, how he puts his, his words out there. But also with you guys, you, you do have all kinds of cool stuff going on there. You do have the bagpipes, you do have the flutes, you do have the violins. It just makes a whole big picture that, you know, I don't want to say it's almost like the lyrics don't matter, but the, maybe the meaning don't. But speaking of meaning... Since we don't know what you're saying, what are some of these songs about? Uh, well, we have well the, the, the starting track of the album will be Siegfried Dragon Slayer. Mm -hmm. Do you know the, the Siegfried saga, the the story about Siegfried? I do not know it yet. It's about it's a very old um, German and northern story mm -hmm. about a, a hero is going to who's going to kill a dragon. And after he killed the dragon, he's taking a bath in the blood of the dragon. Ooh. And while he's to, to become invincible, but while he's taking the bath, a leaf is falling on his shoulder. And that's a small spot where he didn't, where the blood didn't, didn't cover him. So he was vulnerable at that spot. And eventually he was, he gets killed by a spear hitting being hit there and yeah that's a that's a very old story from the middle ages and um they are also about dwarves and rings and stuff like that and even tolkien took some stuff for lord of the rings okay. and infused it in his story and that's, a, that's the starting track basically it's a very old german nordic historic fairy tale i would almost say yeah and then we have um Fegefeuer, the title track, it's a purgatory, it's about Dante, you know, the historic um, the historic book. Then we have Die Horde, and mm -hmm. Urukai Uruk is about about the orcs from Lord of the Rings. Yep. We love to take um, inspiration from Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings and all those epic movies. We have a song called Highlander, which is a small hint to, to Queen and to this do you remember the series of course the yes I love that yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly and that's a small yeah yeah it was inspired by by the song a little bit and by that by that series and by the movies especially yeah most of the songs are, are, are obviously inspired by fantasy books and movies mm -hmm. a little bit medieval stuff a little bit historic stuff and um, also we have Another song called Berserker Mode, which mm -hmm. is already out as a single in the video. Yeah. And that's a lot of fun because it's about Viking berserkers who have to train and pump until they get strong so they can get into battle and to party. It's have you a, seen the video? I did. I was just going to say it's a great video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we had, that's, that was a lot of fun. And it almost didn't happen because our... our, our Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you see, he, was coming from England. he was coming from England and it was the first time he ever left Great Britain and England. And he made his flight to Amsterdam and then he wanted to fly from Amsterdam to, to our destination where we shot the video. But he missed the flight. <laughs> oh, no. Before we shot the video. So we drove by car, like our singer and our tech guy, our light guy, 
drove by a car to Amsterdam, which was like 500 kilometers, picked him up, up at the airport and drove back to the video location in the same night. That oh was my God. Crazy. So it almost didn't happen. <laughs> you had to pick up Jesus in Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, now that you say it. <laughs> No, like we were saying, the the name of the album in, in English translates to Purgatory. So tell us a little bit about the album cover and, and what it depicts and the artist. Yeah, well, the, um, the album cover, basically, that's Siegfried. If you look at the album cover, you have the dragon mm -hmm. who is inside Dante's Inferno, in, inside the figure uh -huh. foyer, yeah. where you all see the lost souls in the background and you have the small knight standing before the dragon, holding his shield up to um, save himself from the dragon fire. And that's supposed to be that Siegfried, which I told you earlier about. Mm -hmm. That's the album cover, yeah. Ah, that makes uh, more sense now. I love that cover very much. It's uh, very detailed. Me too. Detailed. And on the columns, yeah. there's like bodies or something, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, if you look at medieval pictures of, of, um, of, of hell, mm -hmm. And 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 you see some stuff like that very often. And there's also some angels flying around in the background, which um, you might also know from Black Sabbath. <laughs> from oh, Black Sabbath yes. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you guys have any special guests on this album? Oh yes, of course we have. We have Fabienne Ernie from Elevati, the singer from Elevati. Uh -huh. She's singing on Bastard from. Asgard, which is a song which is already out as a single as well in the video. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? I have seen it, yes. That's the one, I believe, the winter one? Yes. Yeah, okay, exactly. shoot. Because I watched a bunch of your videos. I'm like, uh-oh, I think yeah. it was that. Yeah, oh yeah, that was great. Oh, she has a fantastic voice. Yeah, and it was the first time she was singing in German, actually. She usually oh. sings in English with <laughs> Elevati, with her main band. Yep. So it was... Quite an adventure for her to sing in English as well. <laughs> and that video shoot was a lot of fun because we had those those two sets. <clears throat> the main set was a, was like a it's some guy in northern Germany <laughs> that built a village like for live action role players. Ah, cool. But if you go there, it looks like a real Viking village. It's crazy. If you be, if you enter there, you feel it's like you you could make movies there. You know? <laughs> and that's where we drew. Uh, sh shot the band parts and everything mm -hmm. and then a couple of months later our singers and and Fabienne they met in the Austrian Alps <laughs> and went up some glacier and oh, yeah. the, the winter scenes <laughs> so that is real stuff that's not any AI stuff going on there no not at all <laughs> that's <laughs> real no, snow <laughs> that's real snow we don't have any AI or special effects <laughs> <clears throat> and we, we just came back from a 70,000 tons of metal cruise from the Caribbean. Oh, jeez. And, <laughs> yeah. and then the singers had to go to, <laughs> to, the, to snow. The, the winter scenes, so it was quite a contrast. <laughs> and now, the album releases on various formats, and some containing a live bonus, live in Vakken of 2022. So what was it yes. like playing that show, and why did you kind of want to include this particular live set as part of this album in some of these formats? Yeah, well, that that show was very very special for us because it was the first time we played on the main stage in Wacken, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and we immediately played in the night after the headliner after Slipknot on the same stage. Oh geez, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and so that we wanted to to have that special moment conserved basically for for all of us and for ourselves as well because it's the first time playing there. I I think I hope we play there again. <laughs> But the, it's, but the first time is always special, you know. You mm -hmm. you you always were looking forward to that event to play there. We played at Wacken before at the smaller stages, and we always were envious about the main stages because that's that's the real thing, mm -hmm. basically. And and we finally made it. We got it on video, and we will release a video with, with it as well. And yeah, so we thought it's that's something special we want to share with, with everybody. <laughs> and now recently you also played your first headliner show at the legendary Fire Dance Festival. So why was this festival so influential, influential <laughs> to your band history and what did you experience there? The Fire Dance Festival, that's oh. nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we call it Feuertanz Festival, mm -hmm. and it's very close to our to where we live. We all come from the same area. Nice. We're all located yep. in the same area in Germany, which is called Frankonia, around Nuremberg. And this is about like 30 minutes from our hometown, that festival. And it's a festival on an old castle. Oh, nice. In the middle of a village. Mm -hmm. And and it's so scenic. And yeah, the band played the first time there, like 2009, I think. And that was before I even joined the band. They played the first time and they didn't, they even weren't allowed to enter the stage, the main stage. They just played with acoustic guitars and a bagpipe in the market. And slowly we made our way up. So eventually we played on the stage, then we got a better position, like a better in the, in the, in the running order we got later and later. And finally we were, we've been the headliner. It would have been earlier if not Corona would have interrupted right, right. COVID. But but what we did instead, um, we, we at, at the location of the West Festival, we we recorded an online show instead of playing mm -hmm. the festival. So that was, yeah, in the first year of of the lockdowns, wow. we played there. We had a film crew there, and we recorded a show for everybody to watch, and people were allowed. to to donate money to finance it. And it was very, it was interesting how um, emotional the comments have been by the people who watched the show. If you, because we, after the show, we, we rewatched, of course, everything and read the, all the comments of the people. And you really could see how much it meant to, to, the, to the fans that something like that was happening during the, during the lockdowns. And it, it was very, heartwarming I would say. Well it was nice because you actually were at a location but was it weird for you guys too to be playing that show? Absolutely you there was no audience so you've yeah. been with your own basically you played like a show like you would do with lots of people in front of you but there nobody was there just a couple of cameras so you've your your mind was completely different doing mm. a show if you, there's an audience because there's a give and take of energy you know right it's a show a, a concert is always about the audience as well about the communication it's actually a concert or a show is communication be between the band and the audience but since there was no audience it was very weird to mm. play mm. well your summer touring season is kicking off so what can fans expect when they go to your shows this year no, oh, they can expect a lot of fire, a lot of energy, a lot of new songs, and a lot of party. <laughs> and we usually kick ass live, I would, I would say. It's always a lot of fun to, to come to a Feuerstrand show. We have our two dancers on stage who, who do a lot of things, like wearing armor and waving flags. And mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's if you can, come to Germany and, and watch watch us on, on, on a festival. Have and you been I, to Germany before? I have never been to Germany before, not yet. You should. It sounds like I'm gonna have to get there now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And are you guys gonna have some exclusive merch that you can only get at the shows this year? Uh, no, we always have our festival merch, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not exclusive, but we have, um, we had exclusive editions of our album, which is coming out mm -hmm. pretty soon this month. And we have all kinds of limited editions where, where the collector's heart can enjoy. <laughs> yeah, with all kinds of different vinyl editions. And then we have a box set with a very nice um, lightning, fire lightning and yeah. You can check it out at the Na Napalm website. In the, I was just uh, going to ask you that. I was going to say the new album is off of Napalm yeah. Records. It's releasing on July 7th, I believe. Right. On all those different formats. And you guys are also going to be busy this summer over there. So in closing, Hans, what websites can people go to to both pick up these merchandise and follow your band so they know where you're playing. And I know, mm -hmm. you know, you had some earlier cool little contests and stuff going on. So where could people follow you guys? Yeah, the best thing is to check out our band's website, feuerschwanz.de. 
and uh, there are links to the napalm shop and to everywhere and to our merchandise so that would be the center to to check first and then you can go to where you want to <laughs> well there you guys yeah. go they have a new album coming out july 7th off of napalm records you could go to their websites check out where they're playing check out all their cool merch and all like he was saying all different kinds of formats on there and all kinds of goodies and hans thank you for taking the time to do this interview with us today and we wish you and the band all the best thank you so much for the invitation <laughs>